Good evening. Welcome to our midweek worship here at Cana Lutheran. Special welcome to our members and everyone who's joining us throughout the world. Let us begin our time this evening with a brief word of prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, where hearts are fearful and constricted, grant courage and hope. Where anxiety is infectious and widening, grant peace and reassurance. Where impossibilities close every door and window, grant imagination and resistance. Where distrust twists our thinking, grant healing and illumination. Where spirits are daunted and weakened, grant soaring wings and strengthened dreams. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading this evening comes to us from the book of 1 Peter, the first chapter, beginning with the third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his grace, great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now, for a little while, you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Here I this evening's reading. The human experience is one of a roller coaster of emotions. One minute is full of hope, and the next, hopelessness. The Titanic set sail as an unsinkable ship which would usher in a new era of transatlantic travel. Four days later, as the ship began to go down, Captain Smith and everyone else realized that it was a hopeless situation. At the end of May 1940, 350,000 British and French troops were surrounded on the coast of France, with the German army sitting all around them in planes attacking the helpless men. All hope looked lost. But then, over the course of nine days, through the bravery of thousands of civilian and military men, 338,000 soldiers were evacuated safely to Britain, and the rescue from Dunkirk was hailed as a turning point in the war, which gave the British people hope. History is full of all sorts of situations like these that were hopeless or seem hopeless. In this way, history is reflection of our lives, where there are times that everything seems hopeless. But the resurrection of Jesus from the dead promises that you are never hopeless. Most of us, and I include myself, find that trying to maintain an unending stream of hope exhausting, if not impossible. There are numerous reasons why you may become or are hopeless. Illness, grief, money, age-related issues, marital strife, school 
problems, friend struggles, work headaches, quarantine. The list is as long as there are people in the world. And then when one thing has sapped just about all the hope you might have, some other setback comes along and finishes you off. Oh, you're sick? Well, let's make sure your insurance won't cover your bill. Work stinks? Well, how about an argument with your kid? You're lonely since your spouse died? Well, how about some chronic pain to keep you company? When you feel hopeless, the emotions can be hard to explain. Hopelessness is really self-defining. You have no hope. It can also feel like a fog you can't escape, or a thick darkness, or maybe the unbearable weight of absolute discouragement. Tonight, we are anxious as the world is changing before us in ways that we did not anticipate and do not clearly understand and, for the most part, are out of our control. The uncertainty of the near future, however, is overshadowed by the blessed assurances, knowing that Jesus knows the future, holds the future, and holds our hand. Holy Scripture, especially 1 Peter, the book we read from tonight, does not ease our burden by saying, when things are tough, don't fret about others, take care of yourself. In fact, the author of 1 Peter seems to suggest that the tougher the times, the greater the need to live a life of love and service for others. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has begotten us anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. 1 Peter 1, verse 3. The power with which First Peter aims to equip these downtrodden saints is the power of hope. If they or we are going to love like Jesus loved, even in times of great stress and worry, then they and us must be filled with living hope. The opposite of a living hope would be a dead hope. And that calls to mind a similar phrase in James chapter 2, namely, dead faith. Faith without works is dead. James, the second chapter, verse 2. 26. James says, that is, faith is barren, fruitless, unproductive. So, living faith by analogy, living hope, would be fertile, fruitful, productive hope. Living hope hope, the hope that 1 Peter talks about in this evening's reading, living hope is hope that has power and produces changes in life. We are born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ 
from the dead. Once there was a little boy and his father driving down a country road on a beautiful spring afternoon. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a bumblebee flew in the car window. Since the little boy was deathly allergic to bee stings, he became petrified. His father quickly reached out, grabbed the bee, squeezed it in his hand, and then released it. But as soon as he let it go, the young son became frantic once again as it buzzed by the little boy. The father sensed his son's terror. Once again, he reached out his hand. But then he pointed to his hand. There, stuck in his skin, was the stinger of the bee. You see this? The father asked. You don't need to be afraid anymore. I've taken the stinger for you. The writer of 1 Peter reminds us that we have been given a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The resurrection activates a living hope. Perhaps at no other time in our lives have we needed a hope that is alive than we do tonight. A hope that can enliven us and allow us to seek light in darkness, to hold on to what we know to be true when everything seems questionable and or uncertain. Jesus Christ is with us. Jesus Christ will not leave us. Amen. This evening, I'd like to conclude our time with a poem entitled, Just Wait for the Sun. I know many of you have been sick with COVID-19 or know someone that's been sick with the illness. Some of you have lost loved ones to this new disease. Many, if not all of you, are anxious about finances as we as a nation and as a state here in Michigan have paused our economy and have stayed home to keep our neighbors safe. And on nights like this, it is easy to feel hopelessness. But as the words of 1 Peter reminds us, because Jesus lives, we all have a living hope. The hope that no matter how bad today may be, God has not forgotten us. And that at some point, things will get better. This is the poem, Just Wait for the Sun, by the poet Lisa Marks. When everything's darkness and you feel so alone, when the rain doesn't stop and you can't make it home, when it feels all is lost and you just want to run, it can't rain forever. Just wait for the sun. When family is pain, when friends can't be found, when you just want to scream, but you can't find the sound, when it's all your fault and you feel like you're done, just wait for the sun. The sunshine will come. The storm always passes. It won't last forever. The rain always stops and gives way to good weather. 
the brightest and warmest of days still to come, please wait for the sun. The sunshine will come. People who need you, people who still love you, can warm up your soul like the sunshine above you. You're never alone, no matter what's done. Wait for the sun. Just wait for the sun. Dark clouds always pass, I promise you, hon. We are all waiting with you. Just wait for the sun. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us depart in peace.